Okay, so ever since Finland became a thing, they basically spent much of their more interesting part of history during that time Germany tried to kill all the Jews. Remember that time, Germany? So, that'll be the time period I'll be focusing on in this video. In the land of Scandinavia scrotum, Finland and Russia were balls deep into contested lands of Karelia of the Continuation War. What was the Continuation War a continuation of? The Winter War. What was the Winter War? It's basically the same thing as the Continuation War. During the Continuation War, the Finns would recapture Karelia. One of those locations to fall back into Finnish hands was the town called Vipri. Today, Vipri is now known as Viborg, however, I refuse to call that because it sounds like some kind of shade demon or OC made by a 9 year old. On August 29th, 1941, after weeks of fighting, Finnish troops would move into the abandoned town of Vipri from the retreating Russians. Just as the Finns were settling into the city, out of nowhere, BANG! BOOM! Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle! <coughs> Several more explosions would terrorize the town, further damaging vital structures and increasing Finnish casualties. The Finns wrote out the possibility that these explosions were caused by Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle. Despite the evidence. Instead, the Finns reasoned that these explosions were being caused by time-triggered mines. However, in a cliché plot convenience which would have made the Star Wars sequel look like a trilogy worthy of several Oscars, just a day before, a team of pioneers found one of the fuckers that were causing the explosion under a bridge. So they dug it up and sent it to a headquarters to this place where it would be dismantled and investigated. That rule would go to a man named Juko Pajampalo, a man who has gained much respect for his contribution to the battlefield and in return, lost his hairline. <laughs> Under Pajampalo's assistant, Kalaviati, work went underway to understand this mysterious device. It soon became apparent what this thing was and he became aware that this device would put the Finnish army skills to the test. This complex, terrifying mechanism that has been ravaging the town of Vipri was the Soviet-made F-10 radio-controlled mine. I gotta search that up. Give me a moment. The F-10 radio-controlled mine is a complicated device. To put it this way, uh, the mine is set to a certain frequency. Finnish reports of cannibalism provoked the rest It's, uh... It's a complicated device. To put it this way, when radio play noise, mine go boom. Right, it's as simple as that. The thing was powerful too, cause its role on the battlefield was to be used against key structures, with the mines being loaded with anywhere between 120 kg to 4500 kg of TNT. Now why do I bring this up? Well, imagine this, alright? Put this thing in your average size Costco and uh... <laughs> that building is basically fucked. Do you know how big a Costco is? So it was pretty much top priority for the Finns to get those little shits out of town. Additionally, during the Battle of Vipri, the Finns captured a few Russian POWs who confessed about the hair mines and helped the Finnish army identify their location so that they could be safely removed. No, they fucking didn't. The POWs claimed that there are like 300 mines hidden throughout the city when in actuality there are like 25. 17 of which detonated prior to cleanup efforts, so there are like 8 left. Uh, they did tell them where the mines were, so there's that. Now obviously this is quite the dilemma. Juku realized that if he didn't act quickly enough, more of these mines are gonna blow off, causing more casualties. So what was this man's plan? Was he gonna attach the tank with mine flails? Uh, nope. Was he gonna try and get dogs to sniff them out? Again, nope. Mine detectors? Good try, but nope. So Juku had to think outside the box here. He thought to himself, man. If only there was some sort of efficient method that we could use to clear out these devices. His solution? A Finnish folk song by the name of Sakir Vimpolka. A song that I have no clue what they're saying, but uh... You know, it's a good song. It's alright. Now we can not hear you asking, how in the McFuck is a folk song going to counter these radio mines? Do I look like I know? Like, I know I'm supposed to be the one that's supposed to research this topic for this video, but... Like, take a good look at me, okay? Like, come. Come over and take a good look at me, okay? Do I look like I fucking know? Like, there is no fucking way you can't convince me that God didn't sit down and ask himself, was this supposed to happen? Like, I can guarantee you that God looked back at all the shit that led up to this point in history and asked himself, what the fuck happened? Like, do you realize how fucking ridiculous it is to use a fucking folk song against a 20th century piece of advanced engineering? Like the fuck? Either my brain is the size of a grain of rice or I just genuinely don't know how radios work. To the extent of my knowledge, when this song was played, it would scramble the internal system of the mind. How that works, I ain't got a clue, but just take my word for it. 
And so began Operation Sakirovin Polka. The entire town of Vipuri was evacuated and a broadcasting truck brought in from... Give me a moment. God's sake. Broadcasting truck brought in from Lap Pin... Lap Pin... Pin Ran... Something something, I don't know, La Penis was brought in to deal with the mines. La Penranta. La Penranta, that's how you pronounce it. Good to know, moving on. The troops operating broadcasting trucks would tune into a finished radio station, how the fuck do you pronounce this, would continuously play the polka, preventing Russian radio signals from triggering the mines. On the first three days of the operation, the polka was played 1500 times, Jesus Christ, for a song that is nearly three minutes long, 1500 times. Damn, wow, okay. I must have gotten annoying real fast. While all this was going down, the Russians found out about what was going on and thought that now was a good time to start detonating all their mines. They thought. At the closest range they could get without being shot at, barely any of their radios were capable of transmitting anything to mines. And even with their strongest radios, they still weren't capable of triggering the mines. But the Finns were unaware that the Russians couldn't do shit, so they were like, holy shit, we're kind of fucked. So they brought in more broadcasting cars to disrupt the supposed incoming radio signals. These broadcasting cars would tune in into other radio stations that were playing other songs. After six months, it was deemed that all eight mines had their batteries depleted and the Finns could finally sell back into Vipuri. That was until the end of the continuation war when the Finns were pushed back to their modern borders. So if there's a lesson that you can take from this video is that anything could be used as a weapon. Anything.